for recognized for five material minutes. Material that they've been asked. I thank the gentleman, the uh, Mr. Taibbi. Uh, would you care to? I'm down here on this end, sir. Uh, I'm. Uh, would you care to respond to the attack on your ethics? You weren't given really an opportunity to answer. And if you'd be brief, I've got a bunch of stuff I want to ask you as well. Sure, just quickly, the, the, that moment on the Joe Rogan show, I was actually recounting a section from Seymour Hersh's book, Reporter, where he described a scene where the CIA gave him a story, and he was very uncomfortable. Uh, he said that I, who had always gotten the secrets, was being handed the secrets. It, look, again, I've done lots of whistleblower stories. There's always a balancing test that you make when you're given material, and you're always balancing newsworthiness versus the motives of your sources. In this case, the newsworthiness clearly outweighed any other considerations, and I think everybody else who worked on the project agreed. Doesn't it seem like any reporter who breaks a blockbuster story is going to get attention, and there may be even financial consequences that follow? It seems like as, as surely as the night follows the day, that's the case, right? That is true, although I would like to clear up you know, some things that have been misrepresented. Not one of us has actually been paid to do any of this work. We've all um, you know, traveled on our own. We've, uh, we've hired our personnel on our own. And I've just hired a, a pretty large team to investigate this issue yeah. uh, out of my own pocket. The fact that the attempt comes from the dais across the aisle to smear you, uh, you frankly, uh, I think liberals, if I understand that, uh, uh, in your background, you're both good liberals and you come in and the Democrats' hostility to what you've uh, undertaken is astonishing to behold, but it's part of the picture we're seeing. In Twitter files number 15, Mr. Taibbi, you exposed Hamilton 68, a website associated with the German Marshall Fund that purported in a dashboard to identify Russian bot networks and uh, became ubiquitously cited by media to identify media stories or narratives that supposedly flowed from Russia. From Russia! Uh, you showed that the front man for Hamilton 68 was Clint Watts, a former FBI agent. At Twitter, the trust and safety executives were ridiculing Hamilton 68 for the ludicrous uh, identifications that it was making, which they could re reverse engineer and figure out who those accounts were. And then in Twitter files number 17, after disclosing Mr. Watts' identity, you disclosed that J.M. Berger is the creator of Hamilton 68. And guess what? He was a federal contractor, right? He was, yes. He, he, uh, he, he denies that he worked on it for the Global Engagement Center, but he was an employee of theirs until about a month before the dashboard's release. Just a month before it, he said, I believe publicly, that, uh, he, that, that the dashboard was the product of three, year, three years' work. So doesn't it beg sort of the intriguing question whether the creation of this fraudulent Hamilton 68 dashboard was effectively underwritten by government funding? Yes, I think it's, that's a good question. Uh, certainly the German Marshall Fund, which is the, the NGO that is at the top of the chain in this organ, organization, it's the German Marshall Fund, then the Alliance for Securing Democracy, and then Hamilton 68. Uh, they're a federal contractor. They received over a million dollars from the Department of, of Defense. Um, they're the board of the Alliance for Securing Democracy, has a former acting head of the CIA, a uh, former deputy head of the NSA, a former chief of the DHS on yep. it. So I, I want to make, and, and the bigger point is hard because the examples sometimes start making it. I want to introduce you to, or introduce the country to somebody else. I think you've mentioned it in some, one of your writings, Richard Stengel. You know who that is? Yes, he's the former, uh, the first head of the Global Engagement Center. I want the American people to hear from him for 30 seconds. Basically, every country creates their own narrative story. And, and, you know, my old job at the State Department was what people used to joke as the chief propagandist job. We haven't talked about propaganda. Propaganda, I'm not against propaganda. Every country does it, and they have to do it to their own population. Every country does it. Every country does propaganda, and they have to do it to their own people, is what Mr. Stingle said. If I understand correctly, he was the head of the, of the, G, of the Global Engagement Center at its creation, right? He was, and in his book, um, Information Wars, there's, there are a number of passages where he talks about creating a whole-of-government solution to the information problem. He hastened to say that he didn't want to create any, a, quote, information ministry, and but what he was describing roughly approximates that. In the half minute I've got left, he also was associated with Hamilton 68, right? Um, um, the, the Global Engagement Center certainly had ties to Hamilton 68. I yes. think it's closer than that. Well, that'll come out. Okay. 
<laughs> well, Mr. I'd be anxious to hear that. I hope I'll get yielded in a minute or two from somebody else down the way. There's all sorts of stuff to disclose. This committee has to uncover not this, that single instance, but this system that you have described. This is the hope that Americans have to set this right, this committee. And that hostility shows what we're up against. It's not three pillars to the, to the system, it is four. And you're seeing the left move to crush you and anybody else who tries to expose this. I yield. I thank the gentleman for his great uh, five minutes. And we now yield to the